factory. When are you going to stop taking this friend of yours around to these cases to gratify his morbid curiosity? Forget about Weldon, Doc. What did she die of? Not eating, malnutrition. Now look, Doc, in the top bureau drawer, she had bank books showing $32,000 from five different banks. They starve because they're less afraid of death than digging into their savings. I don't know, Doc. It doesn't feel right to me. Listen, Weldon, just because you get up on a stage and make believe you're 70 years old doesn't qualify you as an expert on gerontology. Maybe not, Doc. But I went bald at 25, and I've been playing old men ever since. Look, I, look, I'm serious. Now, I've tried imagining myself growing weak from hunger. I've tried to think of not even spending a nickel to keep me from dying. I, well, I just don't believe it. It isn't right. I don't feel it. Well, lucky for me, I don't have to feel these things inside of me because I'm a doctor and not an actor. Sergeant? Malnutrition induced by senile psychosis. So long. Well, he's right, Mark. We get a couple of these cases every year. Some old bat starving to death with $17,000 in old bills pinned on his union suit. It isn't easy to starve to death. It takes weeks to die of starvation. Did you ever try starving for weeks, Lou? No, did you? Well, the point is, somebody would find out, a janitor, a landlord, somebody, and they'd get him to a hospital. Ah, can't argue with it. Here, there were five bank books, $32,000. The ink's pretty dark. Shouldn't it be faded? <laughs> she probably never took it out in the light. I'd like to get a chemist working on this. Ah, now, Mark. Look, this is strictly against regulations. Well, I guess I could hold them over tonight and bring them down to the property clerk in the morning. Good. I know where I can find a chemist. There's no doubt of it. The ink sample is typical of inks used 50 years ago. There, you see, Weldon? But according to the amount of oxidation, it's only a few months old. There, I was right. Yeah. Well, it's probably some simple explanation. A fresh ink, half a century old. <laughs> What's up, Lou? Well, uh, Mark, an old guy was found wandering around down on Hester Street. Suffering from malnutrition, he had $17,000 in cash inside the lining of his jacket. Is, uh, is he alive? No, not now he isn't. Did he say anything? Just before he went out completely, he did say something. What was it? El Greco. You mean the artist? There's, uh, there's something else, isn't there, Lou? Well, maybe, Mark. We found the old guy's room, and there was an ad thumbtacked over the sink. Nothing too unusual. Here it is. Men and women wanted light work suitable for old people. No references required. Well, I checked it with the lieutenant. He says to forget it. You mind if I keep it? No. Go ahead. Name? Kernit. Louis Kernit. Address? Well, I don't exactly have a place. I've been staying with a fellow down on 12th Street, a friend of mine. And uh, do you have any references? Uh, family? Uh, no, 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 ma'am. I haven't got any family. The, the ad said you didn't need no references. Well, that's right. Uh, now, will you wait? Do I get the job, ma'am? Just wait in the other room. <laughs> Are you awake now, Mr. Weldon? Uh -huh. Ma'am. I don't think what? you need to carry on anymore. You are Mark Weldon. You're about 40 years old, and you played this same character on television about six weeks ago. Why did you apply for this position, Mr. Weldon? Well, uh, as a matter of fact, it was a bet. I, 
was having an argument about the method with an actor who trained at the old Vic. I yeah, well, don't same... bother. You've been very busy recently trying to find out why senile psychotics starve themselves to death. How did you know that? Well, I happen to know that you've been present at several police investigations into these cases. My name is May Roberts. I'm the daughter of the late Dr. Anthony Roberts, the physicist, who was dismissed from the Brookhaven Atomic Energy Laboratory five years ago. I assume you're connected with these starvation cases. Or... I intend to show you, Mr. Weldon. I'm happy to announce that you have the job. Now, look. Don't that... move, Mr. Weldon. Through that door. Five minutes for the field to build up, Mr. Weldon. Please get in the cathode area. You, you mean that wire cage? Go ahead. All right, all right. I wouldn't advise moving now, Mr. Weldon. The wire carries some 10,000 volts. Now, look, Mr. Mr. Robert. Weldon, you're curious. And you could turn out to be a great nuisance to me. As long as you've come this far, we might as well both benefit. Find a set of envelopes. You find a set of instructions on each. Follow them carefully. I don't get it. You will. Sir, do you wish to open an account? Yes, that, that's right. Uh-huh. Well, we're very happy to have a new depositor. Very happy indeed. That's good. All right, now then, name? Mark Weldon. You have no address in the city at present? No, no. And you're depositing $150. That's right. All righty. I'll just check the slip here. $150, right. And the date... May 15th, of course, 1931. 31? All right, Mr. Weldon. We're very happy to have your account. Oh, Mr. Weldon, um, as I understand it, you are buying this stock for a Dr. Anthony Roberts. That's right. I, uh, assume the stock will be in his name? That's right. I'm, I'm just acting as agent. Of course, of course. Well, are you sure I can't convince you that you're making a big mistake? No, no, these are my instructions. Well, now, Mr. Weldon, we are a reputable brokerage house, and, well, frankly, I feel quite shaky about putting our client's money into this kind of security. Uh, there's no future in it. It's a rare metal for which there is very little use for industrial purposes, and, uh, well, however, if your client is adamant. Very well, then. In the name of Dr. Anthony Roberts, 100 shares of... Montana Uranium. It doesn't feel right. Deposit money in my own name in various banks. I'd buy a stock or make a bet for May Roberts. Skipping through the years, touching here and there for a few minutes to an hour at a time. I was making deposits and winning sure bets, just as those senile psychotics had done. But those old people had died of starvation somehow with all that, that cash in banks. I don't want to be found dead in my hotel room. That one. I'll have to clear the charge. Hey, what happened to my hamburger? What? The hamburger. I had it here. It's gone. I'm hungry. I'll get you something to eat, Mr. Weldon, before your next trip. Well, you've done pretty well for yourself, haven't you? Yes, yes, I have. About 15000 Mr. Weldon, I want to talk seriously with you. Now you've seen part of what I'm doing. Part? My father was discharged from all his research and university connections because he insisted in publishing his findings on the temporal field research. But the fact of the matter is that temporal field activities are quite true, and you've seen proof. Well, I... But sending people back through time to bet on sure things like uranium... It's a fair exchange. I pay well for service, don't I? 
I suppose so. But that isn't the most important thing. I've been able to save things that would have been lost otherwise. I've sent people back to find precious treasures that would have been destroyed or would have disappeared. Like an El Greco painting? Yes. Well, Mr. Weldon, I sent you back because I've needed someone to work with me on a regular basis. Someone who's faster and more alert than the old people I've hired till now. I'm hungry. Please, Mr. Weldon, this is very important. We can become the most powerful people in the world. I don't feel very powerful now. You haven't got a sandwich. Have I want to make you an offer, Mr. Weldon. I need someone to help me expand the operation. Can I come out of this cage? Be careful. Now? Don't touch the contacts. The field reacts on a random factor for at least an hour after it's cut off. Well, I'll be careful. Tell me, Miss Roberts, why haven't you been able to go back to the time that your father was alive and bring him back before he died? Dead tissue can't be transported. I assume that you're interested. Fifteen thousand dollars is a lot of money. Of course, you were able to send those old people back a lot further. How long would they be gone? I mean, in subjective time. Several weeks. Perhaps a month, though, more. There's only one problem, Miss Roberts. Well, I'm, I'm sure we can work out any details. Well, this one is a little hard to work out. You see, I'm hungry. I haven't been this hungry since I got lost on a hunting trip and went without food for three days. You see, you forget I've got an interest in this business because they found some old people dead of malnutrition and $30,000 or so tucked away in their pockets. They had been gone a month or more, and they had to eat during that time, didn't they? When they came back, the food disappeared like my hamburger. It disappeared all at once all over their body. They starved to death. No, no, you don't understand. They just couldn't take the field transition. They were too old, some of them, and they lied to me about their age to get the job. Oh, no, you can't tell me that because I know how hungry I am. And I was only gone about 12 hours. They were murdered. Get back. You know, they say a hungry man gets mighty desperate. He'll do almost anything. Let go. Let no. go. Let go of it. Oh. Look out. Look out. The cage. The contact. Oh. You mean there won't be any more of them? No more senile psychotics starving to death with a bankroll in their hip pocket? No, I told you, Lou. Come on now, Mark. We get plenty more. We always have. No, I'll bet you won't. I'll bet you a dollar there won't be another case like that. <laughs> I'll take that bet. I lost the bet. There was one more case. And perhaps it was the strangest one. A woman was found wandering in Bryant Park just before she died of acute starvation. I guess that's what she meant by the random factor. Mm -hmm.